After working three years as a data scientist, I want to share with you the books, the courses and the resources that helped me in my journey. I'm going to break them down into a few categories. The first one is programming. Second one is mathematics and statistics. The third one is machine learning. The fourth is deep learning. The fifth is ML operations and the sixth is ML engineering. In each one of these sections, I'm going to share with you the books, courses, resources that help me improve in each one of these categories so that hopefully you can start today and improve your skill set. First, you always need to have a good grasp of programming. I would advise using Python. A lot of my colleagues and people I know use Python. Of course, you can go and learn any other language that you seem is useful for you. For example, you work in a company that works more with R and you do a lot of statistics, then go for it. But if I can advise you to use one of the programming languages, I would say Python, because it's the most widely used. So many different use cases where you can use Python in. So let's say you go for Python. The first resource I would suggest is to watch the video from Mosh. He made it five or six years ago. It's basically Python for beginners. He goes through the very basic on how to set the variables, the list, the tuples, into building slowly more complex functions and learning how Python works for data and also for building apps. A second one that I would suggest, and this one is very interesting, it's 100 days of code. And this one is a Udemy course and it's paid, but this one gives you more accountability. You fix yourself a goal of being consistent for 100 days and learn every day new things. It goes from complete beginners, uh, like the Mosh video, where you just learn to define the variables, do the list, do very basic uh, loops and filtering and aggregations and all these kind of things into more complex data manipulations, building apps and so on, connecting to APIs, everything within Python. It's interesting because this one gives you more hands-on and the whole point of everything that I'm telling you here, if you don't apply it, then you're just gonna lose it. Think of it as one advice for the whole video and for anything you do. Whatever you learn, try to do a lot of hands-on as well. I always say 20% learning, 80% applying, and you can adjust it based on your level. If you're a complete beginner, you can do 50-50. If you're a pro, then you just need 10% information and 90% and just go and apply it. Second section is mathematics and statistics. Whether you like it or not, uh, machine learning, deep learning are all based on mathematical foundations and statistical foundations. And the best resources that I got from the internet, uh, there is the StatQuest channel from Josh Starmer, if I remember his name correctly. That's a gold mine of statistical information. And the way he explains things makes it so much approachable, nicely visualized, and it's easy to understand. The series is quite long, so you're gonna find 30 or 40 videos. You don't have to go through them all, but getting some basics help. Another resource that I recommend is Practical Statistics for Data Scientists. The cool thing about this one is that you have examples in R and Python, so whichever language you use. Uh, but the goal here is not necessarily to dig into the code, but to understand the fundamentals. And it goes into the very basics and also how you can apply them. And since it's for data scientists, it goes from basic stats into how it is applied in machine learning. So it's a very interesting book that I highly recommend. And the topics that you need to focus on in this part is basically linear algebra, some calculus, some derivatives, learn how to visualize things, what kind of visuals are better for certain cases. So this is a mix of obviously uh, understanding the mathematics and the statistical part of doing machine learning and building algorithms. Section three is machine learning. This one has many, many resources you can find on the internet. If you're a beginner, I would advise to start from the Stanford machine learning course. It's free, it's on YouTube from Andrew NG. He also has a specialized course on Coursera. I think it's called machine learning specialization. Both are really nice. If you just need a theoretical intro, stick to the one on YouTube and just go and do your hands-on yourself. If you want something a little bit more structured with some hands-on, then go for the one in Coursera. It's totally worth it. I did both and honestly, I learned a lot. So I would highly recommend those especially when you're just starting out. Things that you would learn is what is machine learning, uh, what are the different types of machine learning. You do supervised, unsupervised, when you do classification, regression, clustering, you just understand how these models work, where each concept fits into the big picture, depending on the problematic you're trying to solve. For example, a company that's tried to predict if the customers are likely to churn, this is a classification problem. But if you try to predict 
some sort of temperature that varies over time. That's more of a regression where a continuous value changes, where you're trying to cluster populations based on some sort of age or something like this, then that's more of a clustering problem. And these are the basics that you learn by watching and going through these videos. And again, the best way to learn is to apply. If you're interested in machine learning fundamentals, I made a video six months ago. It's 17, 18 minutes where I go through these fundamentals of supervised and supervised machine learning models so that you understand and you build the intuition of what they are. And I also covered videos when I do hands-on so you can go and practice. If you're enjoying the video so far, remember to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. This does help me massively. 75% of you watching are not subscribed yet. So if you find any value, please consider subscribing. It does help me massively. Number four is deep learning. And the MIT has been releasing courses on YouTube for free. That's the exact one that they teach in MIT, in the classroom in the US for free. You can find it on YouTube. They just released the 2025 one, I think a month or two ago. And I've been re-watching it myself. And honestly, it's amazing. And the cool part about it is that you have the 10 one hour videos and you also have the labs that you can access on GitHub. You can just go clone the repository in your own computer and go and apply and learn as well. So you can watch the videos and apply all of that for free. That's amazing what we find these days on the internet. So just go and take advantage of it. If I have one recommendation from talking to a few people that I know, senior people, senior data scientists, senior machine learning engineers, a lot of them recommend shifting to PyTorch because you will always find this dilemma, should I go for TensorFlow or PyTorch? But it seems as if at the moment, PyTorch is gaining more popularity and it's more likely to be the one used by big companies. So if you're just starting out, consider starting with PyTorch, but then even if you go for TensorFlow, it's still a great option. I'm just saying what I've heard from other people. And if you want practical deep learning, there is a resource called Understanding Deep Learning, and it has a lot of notebooks that goes from easy mode to advance all deep learning where you can learn and apply concepts that you learn. So this one is fully practical and this is the kind of resources that really help you go from being a beginner where you don't trust your skills to someone that is quite advanced and understand how to use these complex algorithms into solving real world solutions. And as a reminder, I'm gonna link all these resources in the description below so you can go and find them yourself. There's no affiliate links or anything. I'm just gonna share them with you so you can go and learn. Number five is ML operations or ML ops. And this is where you turn your models, your notebooks into something that is reproducible and usable by the end user. And here we talk about Docker containers. We talk about fast API endpoints to build your applications. We talk about ML flow to track experiments of your machine learning models and do CI CD pipeline with a tool like GitHub Actions. So each one of these tools that I mentioned here, I'm going to share with you a resource of them. And these are more of an introduction uh, into these tools instead of something that is very comprehensive because my belief is as a data scientist, you don't necessarily need to master each tool as long as you know how to use it and what it fits into the whole pipeline. So for example, if you're learning Docker, Docker is just a tool that helps you reproduce your environment and share it with anyone else from anywhere in the world. So when you create a project, you have a set of libraries, uh, Python environment, a lot of specific things that you have on your machine that help you run your project successfully. But another person, they don't have the same versions of certain libraries and things might break. Even things as small as this, they do break projects. So when you put your projects into a container, then it's easier to share with others and they go and they recreate their own where they can run that exact same project. So it's very interesting uh, to learn Docker and I'm gonna share with you a resource about it and you can just get going with it. Next, it's interesting to look into Fast API. There's a very nice channel called Pixagami. He shares a lot of things about tech, about AI and data, and he has a nice video on Fast API and also on AWS that I'm gonna share a little bit later. He goes through how to build your first initial Fast API endpoints going from very basic, just getting into the endpoint itself, reaching the HTTP, 
checking the health and then going into a little bit more intermediate level but this will just give you an intuition and it's always best to apply this in a project as I will discuss a little bit later. MLflow as I mentioned helps you track all the machine learning experiments that you've done for example you've tried the model three months ago and you worked really well and you want to revert back to it if you don't have a tool like MLflow you will never find it again if you have for example five data scientists that experiment with machine learning models you want to track the evolution of each so then in the end you can pick the best one and MLflow again is one of those tools that you can use code basics have a really cool tutorial of 50 minutes it's just a good introduction to it just to build the intuition and again go and apply it to yourself and that's where you learn really how things work and lastly the glue here in MLOps is to learn CI CD pipelines so continuous integration continuous deployment that's where you run test deploy your project so one of the tools that is widely used is github actions that help you do the ci cd pipeline and there is a tutorial from nana from tech with nana if i remember the name and she goes into it and she explains each and every module we can do some unit testing some linting some running the pipeline via for example a push to your github deploying to aws or to the cloud she walks you through each and every module and again it's good to start with the basics and then apply them and you can then iterate and go more complex. I don't think it's worth spending 10 hours just on GitHub action before taking any action yourself. Number six is machine learning engineering and end-to-end -end project. And in this one, I would highly recommend designing machine learning systems by Chip Hewen. This one is my favorite book in data science, machine learning in general. And it's not about the code, it's not code heavy, not at all. It's more about the mindset of data scientists, what to be aware of, what are the best practices from static notebooks into something that is deployed, monitored, observed, and is usable by the end user. This one helps you go from a junior to more of a senior in terms of how you approach data science projects and machine learning projects. So I highly recommend this one whilst working on an end-to-end -end project, having it on the side and learning along the way. And the best way to learn is to practice. And that's why I did end-to-end -end project and I'm still doing and adding more and more. By the time maybe you watch this video, you'll find a few more you can find on my channel. And I did a churn problem. I did a regression problem that I walk you through from getting the data, cleaning it, feature engineering it, doing all the analytics, all the machine learning, the hyperparameter tuning, using MLflow, fast API, Docker container, CI CD pipeline via GitHub Actions, and deploying to AWS, everything in one video. That's how I believe is the best way to learn, is by applying. You'll find challenges, and that's where the videos and the courses can fill in the gaps. Again, depends on where you are in your journey, but that's how you learn is by applying also one thing that i would like to add in this section is to be familiar with minimum one cloud provider such as aws gcp or azure i mainly work with aws but i work with the others as well so i recommend another video of pixagami where he walks you through the basics of how to start in aws and i find it to be very intuitive he shows you the different ways to work in the console in the cli in the sdk and honestly, to get started, it's a great video, but then you'll need to go into each and every service like S3, IAM, VPC, SageMaker, ECR, ECS, EC2, there are plenty. Then you can just slowly go and discover them and use them in your own projects. Again, if you want to do some hands-on end-to-end projects, I will just refer you to this regression end-to-end -end project in here. Go over it, clone the repository, give it a star, try it all learn with these resources and happy building.